They're wrapping a rope about the rim of the disc and pulling on the rope. What constant force would have to be exerted on the rope to bring the merry-go-round from rest to an angular speed of 0 0.7 revolutions per second in two seconds? State the magnitude of the force. So what it's saying is we got a rope wrapped around the merry-go-round and the rope is connected at one end, the other end you are pulling backwards as hard as you can. And as you pull backwards you have to have a constant force and with that constant force you are going to bring the merry-go-round so that it makes it makes almost an entire spin in two seconds almost an entire so 0 0.7 revolutions so one revolution would be all the way from from there to there but it's going to make just a little bit less than that it's going to make 0 0.7 revolutions per per two in two seconds and so uh, the first thing we have to do is convert revolutions per second to radians per second. We know that there are 2 times pi times the radius. That would be the radians in one full revolution. So we can say that uh, we can multiply this by 2 pi uh, by 2 pi divide uh, over one revolution. So revolutions would cancel out and we will get 4.398 radians in two seconds. So we have to divide that by two to get radians per second squared. So our answer is approximately an angular an angular speed of 2.2 radians per second squared. That's how fast. That's the that's the accel what the acceleration has to be to get this thing up to a speed of 0 0.7 revolutions per second in just two seconds. So we gotta set up our force times our radius equals torque and we know that the torque equals the uh, so typically the torque equals the mass times the radius squared times the angular acceleration. However, whenever we have a an odd shape, so I, there are six different odd shapes that we can that we can do that have different equations that have equations that use this as the base but are slightly different so one of those is the cylinder and the disk both use torque equals one half times the mass times the radius squared times the angular acceleration and so we can say uh, we can substitute force times force times radius right here we can say that the force times the radius equals one half of the mass times the radius squared times the angular acceleration and we said that the angular acceleration is 2.2 so we would say the force times times the uh, so the force times the radius the radius it gives us as 1.5 equals one half the mass it gives us as 245 the radius again times the radius squared of 1.5 squared times 2.2 so this simplifies to force times 1.5 equals 606.375 and so then we can just divide by 1.5 on both sides and we get that the force has to equal 404.25 newtons